to be great. So hopefully those who are on Periscope, hopefully the reception and connection is okay now. James chapter one, I want to read a few verses and then dive in. I'm going to start at verse number 19. The Bible says, uh, let's read out of the Amplified version. Understand this, my beloved brethren, let every man, every woman, every person be quick to hear a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. For man's anger does not promote the righteousness God wishes or requires. So get rid of un all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness in an humble, gentle, modest spirit. Receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls. Verse number 22. But be doers of the word. Obey the message and not merely listeners of it, betraying or deceiving your own selves or in de into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. So here's where we are. The very first point I want to share with you, and one of my church members is on Facebook Live, so she already knows where I'm going with this. The first thing I want to share with you is what we've been sharing with Faith Central Church this year, that you have to be quick to hear to believe and to obey God. You have to be quick to hear, to believe and obey God. Our one instruction for our church at Faith Nation that I wanted to share for everybody who would join us on a conference call, on Periscope or on Facebook Live, that you've gotta be quick to hear, believe and obey God. What I share with them at the church and I'll share it to you that HBO needs to become your new favorite channel. HBO needs to become your new favorite channel. Hear, H, believe, B, obey, O. HBO needs to become your new favorite channel. We've got to be. So that's what James tells us in James chapter one, verse 19. He says, let every person be swift or quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath, which means then you got to obey. Let's go to verse number 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. The Amplified says, obey the message. So you've got to be quick to hear the word. You've got to be quick to believe the word. And then you have to be quick to obey the word. And then you position yourselves to be quick to receive the manifestation of that word. The power of obedience. So the next thing is, is that um, when you hear something, you must do something. Okay. So let's just take this literally. Anything you hear, that's why you have to guard your ear gates. Let's, let's do, this is, this is Bible study, so let's do Bible study. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So if faith comes by hearing the word of God, then fear comes by hearing as well. Come on. So faith comes by hearing, but fear comes by hearing also. And whatever you hear longest will become strongest in your life. Let me say it again. Whatever you hear longest will become strongest in your life. And that is why it's imperative to be quick to hear, quick to believe, and quick to obey God's word because there are so many other things that can fill our minds and to fill that space. I want you to share this one. If I haven't hit you with two good nuggets already, I'm not doing my job. I really want you to share this on Facebook Live and on Periscope. So, so the next point is, is that when you hear something, you must do something. Anytime you hear anything, you have to do something with the information that you hear. Whether you are trying to memorize it, whether you want to repeat it, whether you want to uh, remove it and forget all about it, in order to remove something that you've heard, you've got to replace it with so many things that is pushed so far back in your mind or that it doesn't even register in your mind or your memory long term. So when you're quick to hear, what basically it's saying uh, is that you are prompted for action. You've got to take action off of what you hear. That's why when you hear uh, statements of fear, if you're not careful and you're quick to hear and quick to believe and quick to obey that, then you'll start living into things that God never intended for you to live into. 
Whereas the converse is true. When you hear a word of faith and you're quick to believe a word of faith and you're quick to obey a word of faith, then you will see the results of the word of faith. Because when you hear something, you must do something. You're prompted to act. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, it proves this point. Uh, uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a glass, in a glass or in a mirror. Here is what the context is saying. For he looks at himself or looks at herself, goes on your way and forget immediately what you look like. You promptly forget it. But Verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whoever looks in the mirror of the word of God uh, and listens to it and obeys it and becomes a doer of it, he is like a person or she is like a person who looks carefully at him or herself in the mirror. So here is what the scripture is basically telling us. The scripture is telling us that anytime we look at the word, we're looking in the mirror. We're not looking through a window. Let me help you understand the difference. Because I think so often people look through a window. When you look through a window, you're looking at what others are doing. So you're able to judge others. When you look in the mirror, you see a reflection of yourself. So here is the idea. If you don't like what you see, you need to change what you hear and what you obey so that you can start looking like uh, the word of God, because the word of God is not to condemn people. The word of God is to convict people and to change it so you will reflect what's on the pages of the Holy Writ. It's not just about memorizing the Bible. It is about manifesting it. Glory to God. It's not just about memorizing it. It's about manifesting it. So it is that you've got to be quick to hear, quick to believe, and quick to obey. All right, I got one more scripture I want to share with you. Uh, our church, we did a series in our church at the beginning, and I'm flipping uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you're still following me in the Bible, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, we did uh, a series at our church, and this is our theme for the year. Our theme for the year is the year of the commanded blessing. The year of the commanded blessing. I mean this with everything that's within me. I have been seeing the word blessing in a different way in a different light over the past few years. Uh, and I want to share with you just a little bit about the blessing uh, as you are flipping to Deuteronomy 28 or our lunch from Deuteronomy 28 in a moment. So when we talk about commanded, you got to understand that there are some things that God has set aside or has appropriated just for you. And if God has commanded a blessing over you, uh, you don't have to jockey for any blessing. You don't have to beg for a blessing. You don't have to try to steal somebody else's because God has appropriated something, has set something aside just for you. But let me help you understand what the blessing is, because I think that for years we've we've been taught in, in traditional church to believe that the blessing is kind of in a box. So let me share with you that the blessing is not a bunch of things. Although the blessing manifests in things at a particular time, in a particular place, the blessing is not a bunch of things. I'll prove it to you. We say things like, the Lord blessed me with a new car. The Lord blessed me with a house. The Lord blessed me with some money. Well, here is my only issue with that. If you don't have a new house, or if you don't have a new car, or if you don't have any extra money, it does not mean that you are not blessed. It is because you are blessed that you have the new car, that you have the new house, and that you have the money. I'll, I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. Just stick with me because I'm trying to change a paradigm here so you look at the blessing differently. The blessing for our definition uh, is the divine enablement and magnetism that attracts what you need 
and desire as a sign of fulfillment according to the will of God for your life. I know I just said a mouthful. Let me say it again. The definition of blessing is the divine enablement and magnetism that attracts what you need and desire as a sign of fulfillment according to the will of God for your life. So it is because you're blessed that you attract a house to you because it is the will of God that you do not live outdoors. It is because you are blessed and you have the divine enablement and magnetism. Divine enablement means knowledge, wisdom, understanding, discernment, and discretion and magnetism that attracts to you what you need and desire. So the reason why you can consider yourself blessed is because the blessing is not only on you, the blessing is in you. The divine enablement, divine means it comes from God, the divine enablement and magnetism that attracts to you. So whatever I need, it will be attracted to me because of a divine connection, because God can make me the smartest person in the room. Oh, you don't hear me. God can make you the smartest person in the room, even in a group of people that you're not skilled in that area. I'll give you the example that I gave our church at the beginning of the year. I share with the church, God will do crazy stuff like make you a car salesman and put you in a table at a table in a room full of psychophysicists. And you thinking, God, why in the world am I in this room full of psychophysicists? I don't know anything about this, but you put me in a room at a table full of psychophysicists and I'm a car salesman, a car salesperson. Well, uh, what, what God knows is, is that when they finish talking about their theories uh, and their proofs and their conclusions, they're going to need a ride to get somewhere to share with people their proofs and their theories and their conclusions. And that's where your divine enablement kicks in and your magnetism attracts to you what you need and desire. So it is don't think that you are misplaced. No, 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 no. You're not misplaced, but God has you in this place on purpose. Glory to God. Wherever you are, you're not misplaced. He has you there because he wants to see, will you be quick to hear, quick to believe, and quick to obey him? Let me prove all this stuff to you because I threw all this stuff out and I want to prove it to you. I mean, Deuter I hope I didn't lose anybody uh, about the blessing because the blessing is important. So you got to understand that if the blessing is going to work for you, you must do what's commanded, not what's convenient. Oh God, if the blessing is going to work for you, you must do what's commanded, not what's convenient. So let's let's uh, let's dive into Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is my last scripture, uh, and then I'm going to let you go. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, let's go with verses one and two. Uh, first of all, the Bible says, "If you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord, your God, be watchful uh, to do all His commandments which I command you this day. The Lord your God, catch this. If you will listen and obey." His word. This, this is what the Bible says. Look, if you're going to believe anybody in anything, I am making a case tonight that you believe God and his word, that you obey God and his word. So the Bible says here that if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord, your God, being watchful to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord, your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. God will give you in essence, if you will obey him, God will give you new positions. That, that's what the scripture says. If you will obey him, he will give you new positions. He will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All right, pastor, what does that mean? It means then that he will cause you to rise to the top no matter where you are, even if people and systems and things and procedures and protocols are trying to pull you down to the bottom because you have obeyed him, he's going to give you new positions. Verse number two says, and all these blessings 
shall come upon you or overtake you, shall come on you and overtake you if you heed, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. The next thing that will happen if you obey God, he won't just give you new positions, he'll give you new provisions. He'll give you new provisions. I got to help you because if you don't understand, you'll think you have to go chasing after blessings, but you don't have to chase after anything that has already been commanded to chase after you if you would simply obey God. (laughs) <laughs> if you will simply, you mean it, you don't have to work for the blessing. The blessing has been designed to work for you. Your job is to obey. The blessing's job is to do the work. Your work is to obey. The blessing's job is to bring it to you or to bring you to it. Divine enablement, divine magnetism. It's either going to bring it to you, magnetism, or it's going to bring you to it, divine enablement. This all happens. You mean to tell me all I got to do is simply obey God? Yes, yes, yes. I wrote a post the other day. uh, And as a matter of fact, we working on a product line about that. But simply put, I said that if you want to have a successful life, jog, just obey God. It's just that simple. Just obey God. So the Bible, I want to go on and read a couple of few more verses because I love Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, It really excites me. So the Bible says, blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall the fruit of thy, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, uh, the increase of thy kin. Uh, and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall you your, shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall they be when thou comest in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. I want to camp out right there for a second. The Bible says that if you will obey God, if you will simply obey God, that you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, which means no matter where you are, whether you are within city limits or you're outside of city limits, God said the blessing is with you wherever you go. That is so important. The next verse says, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground, and blessed shall be thy cattle the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of your sheep. What that means is, is that when the blessing is on you because of obedience, that everything that comes through you is going to work, is going to to be blessed, is going to be the word blessed here means to be envied. Oh, you don't hear me. God wants to put you in a place that instead of wanting what others have, Others are going to want what you have simply because you have chosen to obey him. He says, uh, blessed shall your store be and your basket be. Blessed shall you be when you go out and when you come in. He even provides protection because in verse number seven, the Bible says here in Deuteronomy 28 verse seven, that the Lord shall cause your enemies to rise against you one way, but they are going to flee seven. They're going to flee seven ways. Now, verse eight is what I really want you to get because this is the key verse for this, the year of the commanded blessing. And the wonderful thing is since faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, if this is the first time you're hearing this, you can now attach your faith to this. This is your year of the commanded blessing. It is an appropriation and and, and something that is set aside just for you, the divine enablement and magnetism that attracts to you what you need and desire as a sign of fulfillment according to the will of God for your life. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number eight, the Bible says the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse and in all that you set your hands to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord thy God will give you. Which means then everywhere you go where God has sent you, God's gonna make sure that whatever comes through your head, through your hands, and through your heart 
It is going to work if you will simply obey him. I've got to talk to somebody just for a moment because you ain't got to compromise to be recognized. You ain't got to give up to go up. You don't have to lie. You don't have to steal. You don't have to cheat. Wherever your resume is lacking, your obedience to God will make up for it. You better hear what I'm telling you. Wherever your educational background is lacking, your obedience to God will make up for it. I believe it with everything that's within me. The Lord has blessed me with an undergraduate degree and a graduate degree, and there are still some doors that have been shut in my face, but I am convinced that if God wants me to go through a door, I ain't going to try to pick the lock. I'm just going to obey God. I'm not going to try to shoot the lock off and have some, go get a locksmith. I'm simply going to obey God, and wherever he wants me to be, I expect it to be blessed because I'm there. So the power of obedience is, is that if you will obey God, he will give you new positions and he'll give you new uh, uh, provisions, new positions, new provisions. I need you to get this in your spirit. You've got to simply just obey God. I cannot drive that point home enough. So I want to get to the end of end of the chapter. I don't want to I don't want to bore you tonight. But the Bible says, let's go uh, to verse number 12, 13, and 14 of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and, and then we'll conclude. The Bible says in verse 12, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, <laughs> the heaven to give rain upon thy land in his season. The Lord's going to open up the good stuff for you. Oh, you don't hear what I'm telling you. I just need you to be quick to hear, quick to believe, and quick to obey tonight. The Lord will open unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hands. And thou shalt lend unto many and not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If thou will hearken, listen to, hear, believe, and obey the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them and don't go aside from them. Don't go to the right or to the left or after any other God to serve them. If you will obey God, here's where we want to go. I want to give you three truths about obedience and then we're going to conclude. I want to give you three truths about obedience. Truth number one about obedience. It's not an obligation. It's an opportunity. All right. Obedience is not an obligation, it's an opportunity. If you look at it as, oh my God, as something else I have to do, if you look at it that way, then it will be dreadful for you. But when you see it as another opportunity for God to get to you, something that he wants to get to you, you quickly understand, discern, and know that obedience is an opportunity it is not an obligation. When I obey God, I give him the opportunity to have blessings run after me so I don't have to run after them. When I obey God, I give God permission to move me into new positions. When I obey God, I give God permission to give me new provisions. Now, Nelson, why are you saying permission? I am saying permission because God is never obligated to fulfill anything outside of his word. Let me say it again. God has fidelity to his word. He's not obligated to fulfill anything outside of his word. But when you keep his word, he obligates himself to reward those who diligently seek him. So truth number one about obedience is that it's not an obligation, it's an opportunity. Truth number two about obedience is your abundance is linked to your obedience. Let me say that again. Your abundance is linked to your obedience. When you obey God, the Bible says right there in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number two, uh, and I close my Bible. Let me open back up to it. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28, verse number two, the Bible says, and all these blessings shall come over thee, shall come on thee and overtake thee. So this is the visual that I want you to get. 
I want you to get being like at a beach or an ocean front where there's a lot of water and nice beautiful sand and you see this big wave coming into shore and you're trying to run away from you turn the opposite way and you're running away from it because you don't want to be overwhelmed by the wave that's coming in God says if you will obey him that's how blessings things will be in your life because of the blessing, the divine enablement and magnetism that the, because of the blessing, the capital B without an S, the blessings with an S will chase you down and overtake you. Will It will make, it will flow, but it won't flood you because your abundance is connected or linked to your obedience. Truth about obedience. Truth number one, it's not an obligation, it's an opportunity. Truth number two, your abundance is linked or connected to your obedience. Truth number three about obedience is always the hearer's choice. What'd you say, Pastor? It's always the hearer's choice. Now that you've heard what the word had to say, I end the way I opened. I told you earlier, when you hear something, you must do something. You've just heard a brief word, a brief lesson on the power of obedience. You've heard something. It is your choice to decide whether you're going to obey or not obey. If you will obey God, There are at least 21 blessed scenes in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 that talks about what will happen to the person who has the blessing, the divine enablement and magnetism. If you read verses 15 through 68, I believe, of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it tells you about the curses that will happen in your life if you choose not to obey. I want to strongly encourage you to obey God. I want to, God sees what you can't see. He is where you are not. He knows what you don't know. I want to simply encourage you to obey God. You will always have options to do other things, but it's the hearer's choice to be quick to hear, quick to believe, Quick to Obey, HBO, your new favorite channel. It is the hearer's choice to do that. The power of obedience. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be alive today. We appreciate you, Lord. I thank you for everyone who is listening to our Purpose and Power conference call through the phone line. Thank you, Lord, for those who were able to hear through Periscope. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for those who were able to watch on Facebook Live. Thank you for those who are watching or listening now uh, or even will listen to it or watch it by replay. Those who will see it on YouTube and whatever other medium we choose to use. Lord, I pray that this this mini lesson on the power of obedience uh, will will prompt us uh, and will push us to do what we've never done for you so we can get what we've never gotten from you. It is relationship. It is an exchange. And so, Lord, I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for the divine enablement and magnetism that attracts to us what we need and desire uh, as according, excuse me, uh, according to the will of God for our lives as a sign of fulfillment. I thank you, Lord, because we recognize that the blessing is going to work for us. We have to do as commanded and not what's convenient. In the name of Jesus, we believe that we're going to obey you. And because we're going to obey you, you're going to give us new positions. You're going to give us new provisions. You're going to give us new possessions simply because we have obeyed you. We thank you, Lord, for the truth about obedience, that it's not an obligation. It's an opportunity. What a privilege it is to obey you, God. We thank you, Lord, for the truth about obedience, that our abundance is linked to our obedience. And we thank you, Lord, because as our choice, we've got to do something. And Lord, we choose to believe. We give you praise tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I'm so grateful uh, that you have joined us. Uh, If you have not been with us, we have been on a Wednesday weekly journey uh, for the last five Wednesdays. Uh, The first week we talked about uh, the power of the word. 
uh, about study the word. The second Wednesday, we talked about the power uh, of, a, of prayer and the power of a prayer life, developing a prayer life. Uh, the third week, we talked about uh, the power of fellowship. Last week, uh, the fourth week, we talked about the power of a witness. And this week, we, we just ministered on uh, the power of obedience. Hey, I really want you to be all that God has called you to be, whether you are a member of Faith Central Church or whether you are a member of the body of Christ at large. Uh, we're, we're using these all three of these platforms uh, to get the word of God out because we're believing God to strengthen our core. I want you to be all that God has called you to be. Uh, if you want to join in, you can tune in next week, next Wednesday. Uh, it's week number six, and we'll be talking about uh, the power of giving, uh, the power of giving, talking about giving liberally. That's number, that's our core number six. And then we'll end uh, during Holy Week, uh, April 12th, I believe, on core seven, which is believing God for everything. Hey, uh, I want you, I'm going to upload this to uh, my YouTube channel. So if you haven't, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's uh, Nelson A. Henry. You can go to YouTube uh, and search Nelson A. Henry uh, and upload and see see this, excuse me, subscribe to the channel and you can see uh, this video and many others. It is my desire not to be impressive, but to make an impression that cannot be easily erased. Hey, uh, this is not a gimmick to me or a game, but but I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to think about it uh, and, and to do it as ever God enables you to. If you want to sow uh, into this word, you can go to Givelify, uh, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, Givelify. If you have the app on your phone or you could download the app and you could give, you can sow into this ministry. This is the first time uh, in five weeks that I'm doing this. And hey, this is not a plea. Please hear my heart. This is not some gimmick for money. Faith Central Church is doing okay. The Lord has blessed us. However, you honor God by sowing into something that you did not have at first. And a thank you offering unto the Lord uh, will always bless you. If you go to Givelify, uh, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, and you download the app on your smart device, or if you already have it downloaded, uh, you can search for Faith Central Church Redford, Michigan. It should have our logo. Uh, I think there's a picture of me on there, so you you know it's that when you get there. Faith Central Church of Redford, Michigan. Hey, if the Lord has placed on your heart to give and you don't have it to give, I pray that the Lord will give you something to give. And when you get it, if you choose to sow it, it will be a blessing to us and it definitely will be a blessing to you. But ultimately, I want you to obey God. Once again, this is not a gimmick to get your money. I honor God and you uh, more than that than to play games like that. But I do believe in the principle that what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Hey, hope you've enjoyed the word. Please share this with somebody else. Uh, and until next time, continue to walk by faith. We'll be back next Wednesday with uh, our next Purpose and Power conference call at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Until then, stay blessed. God bless you.